is um, Red Rum. So like walk us through the experience from your perspective of what happened on that shoot. Cause that shoot was really something like the internet's gotta know. No, I had a feeling yeah. you were gonna bring this one up too. What is up everyone hope you're having a great day so i am back once again with another episode of the ian show and this time we are bringing back one of our favorites and first ever returning guest of the ian show mr tyler pope how are you doing today sir i'm doing good hi everyone oh this lockdown has gotten to me oh yeah this this lockdown is brutal man like but the nice thing about it is it gives us like extra time like for I mean, sure like, yeah that that was a big reason why i started thought about bringing back the Ian show is because um, like no one's doing anything right now, man. So exactly. Right. Back, it's like, I'm one of the only few people making content right about now. So, Oh yeah. I, um, I, I went back to the, the first episode we did on the Ian show. Oh, oh man. Like, I cringed so hard, dude. Like I, I, I got like two minutes in. I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't watch the whole thing. Like this is, this is too much. <laughs> That's why I haven't rewatched it. Yeah, dude. Dude, it's like I'm like I filmed this, I, I made this. I, I like I hope I hope like in like 2030 or whatever we'll be looking back to this interview and being like, oh god, like this is we actually did this. I know, right? And that's probably what's gonna happen too. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Not oh. not the worst I've done. It's better than some other projects that I just recently watched over, and I'm like, Phew. I did that. <laughs> So like yeah, um, since since the last interview we've had, like what's been new? Like um, what are you up to these days? Uh, these days uh, I would have to say not very much. I've just been doing the same four things: so going to work, coming home, posting on Instagram, go to bed to go to work again, and it's just been that repetitive cycle for this whole month. No, I get that. I get that. But hey, the thing about you though is like you've. Like we went into the, like the film industry around the same time. Like we've both been doing this for a while. So like, um, that's one thing I want to talk about is like your, like your work ethic is unmatched. Like I remember we did this one night shoot or whatever. And then literally we drove you to set. Like as soon as we were done at like 7 a.m., we drove you to set to the, to another sh like 12 hour shoot you were doing. Like, how do you, how do you keep going like that? And then the bus broke down on us and it was cold as hell. That what, was yeah. it? Was it that time too? Was it all the same night? It was the same night. Oh God! Yeah. So like, so let's uh let's let's t let's tell them the story like here. Um, like you that you're the guest. Like t tell uh tell the audience what happened. Okay, I'll tell what happened. So basically, we were on this film. So basically, the holding for the actors that were performing in this piece, we we were in this bus. It was like a Greyhound bus. It was a pretty big bus. It was a party bus. He showed up in this party yeah. bus and we're like, oh, sweet, like we actually got this. Yeah, exactly. And it was also like minus 20 below out. So what happened was we were getting ready. It was a, I believe, 14 hour shoot that time. I think it was shot for 14 hours. I think we started at noon. Like eight or nine. Eight or nine? Yeah, we finished like at four or five a.m. or something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then back a little bit of backstory for me is i had to be on another shoot at seven in the morning the next day after we finished the we were leaving to go to where mike had his crown victorian but then halfway through i think it was all, just as we were about to hit the highway the bus broke down and everything shut off on it and it's minus 20 below out i said the crown victorian car ahead of time for some foreshadowing because in order for us to actually get back, because I don't think we were in Ottawa. I think we were just outside Ottawa. We were like South Keys or something, I think. So, somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, when the bus broke down, we, we were starting to freeze. And we were like, well, we can't go anywhere. But it just got colder and colder and colder. And then Mike, with his Crown Victorian car, pulls up and says, get into the car and we'll drive there and I'll fix the bus tomorrow or tow it back to the station and then they dropped me off at the next set so i did not sleep at all for 24 hours yeah and you can't keep in mind though because like it was like me you and vince in that bus we we're the only three left i think yes um, yes 
keep in mind, like you cannot take a nap in that bus. It is freezing cold. It was like pitch. It was like just sun was just starting to come up. It was, re- it was, it was fucking freezing. Like it oh was bad. Goodness. And we were there for like a good like hour or so. Like it was, it wasn't hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't think it was two hours, but still, it was a, it was a long time. We're in this freezing. It felt like two hours because of yeah, the cold. It did. It, it did. One hundred percent. So, like, what inspires you to do like you know a crazy shoot like that, and then just go right to the next one? Like, what drives you? That's a good question, actually, because I've always been, I guess, a seeker of knowledge, as they call it. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I've went from that shoot to the shoot right afterwards is because uh, I was just starting. Like, we were just starting, and I. I guess wanted to be a good film person and yeah wanted to be like happy everyone like not like in the way cuz mm. back when I was a child I was like in the way in a sense most Dang of the time yeah. and I didn't, I didn't want to be that person anymore especially into something I wanted to do as a career mm. so I just it was inner determination, I would say. Determination and probably a little bit of stupidity, but worth it. I'd probably rephrase it to craziness because, like, honestly, like, when you, when we were in that car and you're like, oh, I'm doing another shoot, I'm like, you're crazy. You just went <laughs> yes. through this insane night shoot and you're just going right to the next one. Yep. Yeah. But, yeah, I've been seeing, like, you've been, like, doing a lot of, like, director photography work now. Is that correct? Yes, I have been. I figured I would step back into the director of photography shoots because I did do DOP work for a while for one film and uh, it did not turn out well. This is going back to one of those cringy videos if you want to see it. It was called What If that kind of uninspired me to be DOP, but I had everyone in the Ottawa film community say, oh, no, you just got to get it happens. You got to get right back into it. And for those in the audience watching this, if you can find what if on YouTube, praise to you, because I've tried to like bury that. But that was my very first DOP work. And just a lot of stuff happened behind the scenes that will take literally another episode of the show to talk about. So we'll just just if you want to. It was very funny, though. It is kind of funny see like the journey the one person takes oh yeah 100 percent. and that's that's something i kind of want to talk to you about too because we've both been doing this for a while and like you know like i mean talking back to our our first time doing this um yeah it's like you look like you kind of have to like kind of go through the struggle or like go through like you know like those like not up to your standards like content or whatever um how did you overcome like you know you just did that short film and you're like oh i'm not happy with it or whatever i remember you like telling me that a lot like how do you overcome that and like move on these are good questions damn you gotta make me use my brain i, I did my research man <laughs> <laughs> you did do your research. but i would say to answer your question to overcome that it was the inner sight, I call it insight, to myself saying, no, there will be better opportunities. This, this was a roadblock. And in the film industry, you'll have a lot of roadblocks. And people will say, oh, well, you need to go through roadblocks in order to get to where you want to be, which is 100% true. So I think to further answer your question, how did I get through it? I will say I had a lot of people in the Ottawa film community help me by just keeping me like, oh, you'll do a better one. You'll do a better one. You'll do a better one. And then just uh, back then, when I first started, I used to listen to music a lot, as you can tell. I see Tupac. Yeah, Tupac. Love it. Yeah, the part too. That's dope. Yeah, that's us. That's, that's yeah. R.I.P. Awesome, to him. I would just R. listen R. to the legends and listen to their interviews and how they say that before they even started, they had to go through roadblocks, which sounded similar to what I had to go through. And I'm like, okay. So basically, I would take, take the time to do research, which is my favorite part now, to do a little more research and then use that research to get back into the next film, learn a little bit more, because going back to what I said, being a knowledge seeker, I was always just trying to keep positive and stay positive, and then positive stuff would just 
start happening around me awesome, because man. I I was being positive and just like there'll be a better one there'll be a better one no it's really good man like I'm I'm super happy for you like you're doing a lot of stuff um so like what are you what are you working on right now well kind of got a little bit back burnered because well lockdown and stuff but yeah. I am working on a very I wouldn't say personal project but like a personal goal more of the sense I'm trying to make a saga of like a series of films for like the auto filmmakers community. Oh, nice, nice. But I'm going to start it off with like three short films that I'm actually writing right now in my notebook somewhere, which are oh, nice. like stacked like this high. That's awesome, man. So. Yeah. So I'm doing that. I also have another project sometime in the summer. I don't know when, but my main focus is this whole like, saga and this saga i was going to be like a not a murder mystery but a mystery fantasy sort of genre going back to my yeah going back to my old roots of being a fantasy buff and a geek oh yeah dude i was a fantasy buff too i totally get it like i was fucking hardcore i'm trying to incorporate but on like a small budget incorporate how to work and try to just be inspirational with very little that's awesome. That's really cool. And um, one thing that I kind of struggled with, and we went, we were in the film industry around the same time, was like you know getting into the Ottawa film industry. I found it very difficult. Um, it's a lot easier now, but like, tell me about like your journey, like getting into the Ottawa film industry, because I know in like in 2016 it was really hard to get in. So, uh, my journey into the Ottawa filmmakers industry, to be perfectly honest. I would have to say I actually just fell into it. Like I would, yeah, I didn't have a goal to go into the auto film community because before I did film, I was a hip hop dancer and that oh, was no my way. main goal. What? How did I not know that? How did I not know that? <laughs> really? I thought I talked no, about I, don't I mean, half the time we're talking, I'm drunk anyways. Like. <laughs> fair, fair. This is fair. But yeah, no, I used to be a hip hop dancer and that's what I wanted to pursue. But then I always felt like I was like, I I swear, I think I can get more visionary, more creative energy out by doing something else. I just don't know how yet. Then I saw this one casting for like, oh, we're looking for extras to be on like an indie project. And I was like, oh, this seems interesting. And it was actually a dance video, but it was it, it was It was a dance video, but it was a movie at the same time. Sort of like a musical almost, but not with like full choreography dances. Yeah, yeah. Just like clubs and stuff. And I looked at all the equipment and I was like, this thing is pretty cool. I wonder if they do more of this. And I literally said that out loud on one of the sets (laughs) because I talk to myself on set all the time. And I guess someone heard me and he's like, well, actually, I know these people. They run this film op called The Auto Filmmakers. And I was like, oh, okay. So I can like do other stuff like this. He was like, yeah, give it a try. Check it out. I took his word for it. And then I literally just fell into it. And here I am now. Nice, nice, good stuff. That's uh, that, that's awesome, man. You're just like, yeah, because at least for me, it took me like six months trying to get in before I finally got in. So That's all it takes, like- it's that one. That's true. And like now it's like if anyone wants to be like an aspiring like actor or whatever, I just I just add them straight to the group. I'm like, yo, like I I don't want you to go through six months of pain like I did. So for your um performing arts program, like I know you did that. What was that experience like? And do you think it's necessary to, you know, have that professional education to do what you do? I would say yes for me, but everyone is different, right? So for me. Because I didn't know anything about film gear or positioning on a stage. The only reason I actually joined the program was because they had a hip hop version. Going back to my hip hop dancer, they had nice. like a whole like two months of hip hop, and that's why I did it. And then yeah. also I learned all about like film and stuff and theater. And I was like, okay, I find that the performing arts program that I took is um is like basic for acting and performing. Okay. But to specialize in something, you have to go f- for that one. 
because for me, I'm a jack of all trades. So I do all of it to specialize in one. I think having that basis program helped me a lot to not be totally lost in yeah. once I started filming and doing acting. Yeah. So you found it to be like a really good like stepping stone to like do what, exactly. you know, now. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that, that's really good. Exactly. That's really good. Obviously, we've done a lot of projects together. Um, yeah. There's, you know, some some great, some some not so great. Um, but one that stands out particularly that you know, I think we can talk about now and not have to worry about like getting sued or whatever is um, Red Rum. So like walk us through the experience from your perspective of what happened on that shoot, because that shoot was really something like <laughs> the internet's got to know. God, I had a feeling yeah. we were going to bring this one up too. Uh, this is what happens on the Ian show, folks. This is Ian yeah, in his prime right this, here. This Ian in his prime right here. <laughs> I, I tried to bury that with the other film I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Red Rum. Interesting. Let me go. Let me go back to the back of my skull here to find what you happened. Want me to get it started, or like? No, no. I'll I'll get to it. Let me tell you the basis of what this movie was. It was a music video for this up and coming singer rapper rapper that contacted us. And basically the sum of this music video was red rum, as you know, red rum for the folks that don't know is murder backwards. It was this young teenager trying to make waves. And I appreciate how she tried to get into like filming stuff. It's just the business side of it and like managers and stuff. She didn't quite learn. Was well, completely lacking. That, that's, you're being so nice. Like, dude. I'm trying to be nice, <laughs> but I'm getting to the bad part. That's why I'm, I'm just building it up right now. Okay. And I, yes, I am being nice. She didn't know the business side of like film and contracts which makes sense however when we shot this video apparently she's not a good visionary either because none of it made sense there was like she was walking through trees with i think the coolest part of that was smoke bombs that was because we used smoke well, bombs that was the only part that we actually planned because like when we we had everything like the night before i'm like are we doing this this is how we set but this is a big mistake you make on music videos like never trust your client with anything location based at all and she's like, two, of those three, exactly. lo three, two out of the three locations were on her. And she's like, yeah, I got it covered. Show up, you know, drive an hour and a half, actually about two hours, show up there. And she's like, yep. yeah, um, both the locations fell through. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? She's like, uh, we don't have any of them. So like, I'm scrambling, freaking the fuck out, figuring out like what to do, you know, exactly. like, for these next two, like, oh my God. Um, yeah, you were a location manager too on that set. Yeah, yeah, because like, and like I said, the, the best shots were the smokescreen ones, and those were the only ones that were like pre-planned. So that and the fact that she was three hours late. It was four. It was four. Four hours late. That yeah. irritated me, because I'm the type of person I don't like being late. Okay. If I'm like five minutes late, I'm like, oh my god, I'm sorry. Please, please, don't, don't fire me. Yeah. Me. Traffic was bad. No, but when you're four hours late, it's like, okay, you didn't even want to do this music video. You're mm -hmm. just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. Yeah. Afterwards, after we finished shooting and we edited it, because all three of us edited the movie together. Yep. That's when the paperwork went haywire. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that's basically the sum of what happened to Red Rum. Yeah. No, I remember like, well, what what happened? Like her, uh, she only paid us some of her, her some of her editing deposit because she um she won the jackpot at the at the slots in the casino, and then the um the rest of the money her manager had to pay us out of his emergency fund. Yeah, 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 man. <laughs> that it it was red rum, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so like I remember you saying you know you were kind of like you know the star the intention on set like i was kind of like that when i was starting out too um which brings me to the question like if you were to do like this whole journey all over again what was like and you just start out as like a new person um what's one piece of advice you would give to them 
One piece of advice I would give to them if they were starting, don't stop. Even if it's the most mundane thing, take a photo of your mask. Like let's let's go pandemic wise. Take a photo of your mask or like do a little stop motion with your mask. It's mundane and doesn't make sense, but just keep doing it and learning the equipment you have. Because I shot my very first film on a point and shoot camera that only had one angle and a plastic tripod. And I made a music video. It was terrible. And I also didn't know how to edit at the time. But what I would say for people coming up into the industry would be, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter who it is, always find, it could be a Tic Tac box. Always hmm. create a story. Because if you create a story, your imagination stays like when you were a kid. And you can keep, and I wouldn't say recycle when you're going further in the industry, but using some ideas you got from other stuff you did and to put back into it, but better. You just got to uh, keep the... I think the point I'm trying to say is always keep the gears oiled. No, that's that's true. That that's really good advice. You always got to keep going and always think because you'll you'll get set back a lot. But the key is to just like yeah, keep learning, keep improving. Like kind of be a student for life. You know, you never want to assume you know everything. I, I think that pretty much concludes the interview, Tyler. Thank you so much for returning to the Ian Show. And um, before you, no problem, no problem. And before I end this, um, where can people find you at? Well, people can find my work on Instagram at Manor Park underscore Studios, not dash underscore. Some people yep. screw that up. Uh, and on Facebook, you can just search Tyler Pope's film and acting page. So yeah, once again, thank you so much. Um, you know, good luck in your journey, and like we'll um, we'll definitely talk soon for sure. So that concludes today's episode of The Ian Show. Thank you so much for Tyler Pope for being back on the show. And if you want to be on The Ian Show, feel free to message me on my Instagram, at Ian R. Anderson. Hope you're all having a great day and staying safe. Talk to you soon. Peace.